everyone. I'm back in the kitchen. Quite honestly, it's been a long day. We're still doing our renovation here on Homestead, redoing our entire kitchen um, with help of our kitchen installers and ourselves doing our flooring. We're doing entirely new flooring on the upper level of our house and painting <laughs> the entire upper level of our house. We've been here three years this month and it finally feels like we're making some choices to make this house feel like ours rather than just moving in our furniture and living here, um, which is very much what we've done since, since we got here. Um, tonight we need a quick, quick and easy dinner. I've had a chicken in the fridge for three days thawing. Whoops. I thought I was going to make this yesterday, um, but I do have a four and a half pound chicken here. It is dripping all over the counter. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna get that started to cook in the Instapot. Well, Chris is outside with the snowblower. We've spent the afternoon doing flooring and now he's outside dealing with the 30 to 40 centimeters of snow we've gotten in the last like 18 hours. It came down really quickly. Um, and we're due to have up to they say 60 to 100 centimeters of snow before Tuesday. Today is Sunday. Um, so cooking a whole chicken is a really good idea. There's a high probability that our power could go out here. We live, I joke, in the woods, um, but our area was historically a logging area. A lot of the properties out here have been clear cut and then just left to grow back. And um, as logging is not as popular on a small scale here at the moment, a lot of these um, lots have been left to grow up and then clear cut a bit more to build a house on it and then good luck to you. Um, hopefully your trees remain standing and in this kind of weather they really don't. So we're gonna prepare for a three to four day power outage. Um, having a whole chicken will mean we can have sandwiches and stuff and we actually don't have any bread. Um, this storm really snuck up on us. Uh, usually we would make sure we have like bread and milk and those sorts of things and storm chips because we're in Nova Scotia. Um, I don't even think we have any storm chips. Maybe nacho chips will count. I think we still have half a bag from Costco. So uh, yeah, let's, let's hope we get some bread made before the power goes out. I do think I'm gonna start a quick batch of yeasted bread here um, while dinner's going also. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so we have the chicken here. It's been thawing like this in its bowl in the fridge. The bowl catches everything as it um, melts and starts dripping. And I have a liter of home canned broth. I think this is chicken broth. It just says broth. We're gonna use that one. We're also gonna grab four cloves of garlic, some sea salt, some pepper, some onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, paprika, rosemary, thyme, and butter that is currently melting on the stove, as well as some lemon juice. A good mix of spices for this chicken. It should take us about an hour. It's not too bad. Hopefully Chris will be done with most of the snow by then. Yeah, let's start pulling those spices and herbs. So we've got a bag of homegrown garlic here. Some from our CSA is mixed in here at this point. And because we are now in February, some of it is starting to show some age. We had some issues with garlic this year. Focus, please. Here, hopefully you can see that. But um, some of our garlic has spots in it. I think it was like a, a pest that damaged the garlic in the garden. So we're gonna make sure to rotate that well this year. And we've just been picking through it as we go to use it. I think that will be our garlic for tonight. need to mince that so I can just peel it. Ew! Not that one. I do hate throwing out produce that I've grown myself so I probably should have gone through some of this a bit better um, when I harvested it in the fall but that's okay. 
Nothing else in the bag is moldy. Um, so. Mostly it was just that one clove. We do make sure to break our garlic um, up and store it in different paper bags. So I think I have like three or four more of these bags um, in our pantry, which right now is in our guest bedroom. If you're a guest here, it's really helpful when we have notice. It takes me about six hours to get our pantry spare room together. All right, I got a phone call, but we are back. I've got a few remaining ingredients to put in with our chicken here in our Instapot. So, so far we've separated the skin from the breast and put the seasoning mix inside. Um, and yeah, now we're gonna add our liquids. So our liquids, we have that home canned broth. We've got one cup we're gonna add. And I do not have any smaller jars. And that's okay. And we're also going to add our lemon juice. This says about a tablespoon. This has tablespoon measurements, so we're just gonna use that. Lemon juice. Okay. Aha! Okay, we've got this on clothes. We're gonna put this on ceiling. And this is for a four pound chicken. We're going to pressure cook for 25 minutes. Awesome. So that is on, it's gonna do its thing for the next hour. Then we're gonna let it naturally release for 15 minutes um, before we use the drippings from the Instapot to make a gravy. So I'm gonna set myself a timer for about half an hour and then I'm gonna start on the vegetables to go with the chicken. I did not have a plan for that. Okay, real life homesteading in Nova Scotia. Chris has cleared a path with the snowblower. Let's see if we can get to the chickens. They look looking for something else to eat. They did manage to get their door opened. I just have to get the rest of the way. Definitely ready to eat. Got the door opened. Just enough to get in here, third bucket. You can see it's still pretty dry. We've got some tarps up that the snow is weighing down. The hard part, this is our waterer. And it seems to be empty rather than frozen, which is helpful. I have to take that to the kitchen sink. I'll be back. Lukewarm water from the kitchen sink. We have two outdoor spigots on either side of the house. Of course, they're both frozen. Well, it's always a good sign when you bring them out water and they're not desperately getting it. They definitely got some out of there today. Make sure they know the nipples aren't frozen anymore and they can get some. Ladies are pretty well trained. I am not going to try for eggs today because we collect our eggs from outside. Good ladies.
All right, I got a idea for a side for dinner. So from our CSA, we got some potatoes this week, some parsnips we've had in the fridge from them for a bit, and some carrots. And we're just gonna do a tray bake to go along with this chicken. It's been a little bit since I put the chicken in. It's come up to pressure and it's got about 17 minutes left. And then following that, it needs to naturally release for 15 minutes. So we've certainly got lots of time to get this stuff going. All right, a bowl for the chickens. I'm sure after all this snow, they'll be happy for some scraps. Made it out to see the chickens in the snow. I'm about 5'2", five 5'3", five and the snow is currently past my knees out there. And we're due to get more than double this. So I'm glad that we've got some snow clearing done. Chris is in from doing some snow blowing. Definitely gonna be an interesting few days. Of course, our countertops are due to come on Monday for our kitchen renovation. So we'll see if they make it out here. When they came for the templating that they do, they came in a snowstorm and assured me they work in all weather. But we'll see. Hopefully we have power when they come on Monday. Snip. I don't think I had ever had a parsnip before I moved to Nova Scotia. I didn't know what it was. Now they're one of my favorites. And they're really, really good. Roast it in the oven with some olive oil, salt and pepper, and then dipped in a garlic aioli. We've got some like off the shelf garlic aioli that we've got in the fridge and that's probably what we'll have with the chicken tonight. And do I might make a gravy too, we'll see how that goes. Maybe we'll just save the gravy for hot chicken sandwiches. few potatoes it's just the two of us we're gonna have these carrots and parsnips with them too um, I'm just gonna wash these in the sink and then leave the skins on skins are a bit thicker than normal they're closer to like a russet potato but it'll be fine little mix of root vegetables there we're gonna get some olive oil some salt and pepper and we'll be good to go not actually measuring this but this is my salt jar and I don't want to put my fingers in here so let's use a measuring spoon. That looks like that salt. Find our pepper. All 
right, and we're just gonna get everything coated in that olive oil, salt and pepper, and we're gonna wait for our oven to finish preheating. It's preheating to 400 degrees. And I expect these to take about 30 to 45 minutes. So I think it's almost done. And this should be an easy meal. It does take just over an hour. So depending on your schedule, this could be a weeknight dinner for you, or maybe it's just a weekend dinner. But actual input time is a bit lower, so for me this works. Here the chicken was finished and the natural release of 15 minutes had also completed. So I'm just removing the trivet with the chicken and setting it aside wearing uh, oven mitts so I don't burn myself. You can see it's falling apart and very much done. There is a lot of broth from pressure cooking the chicken in the Instapot. So I used the recommended recipe and made gravy out of this. So here I'm just getting ready to strain the broth that was remaining from the cooking the chicken in the Instapot. I'm straining it to remove any solids or chicken skin that had fallen off during the cooking process and preparing to make that gravy. The recipe recommended removing some of the fat um, from the broth, so I'm removing just a small amount. I really find this quite annoying. I know I have a, a tool, like a fat separator, but I couldn't find it with the kitchen renovation. Also, forgive my pajama pants. This is winter in Canada. You go outside, get covered in snow, and you come in and put your pajamas on before supper. All right, so I got that chicken broth into a pot here on the stovetop, adding some butter as well as about three tablespoons of flour. You can see I'm very neat and tidy what I'm cooking here. And I'm just going to whisk that and make sure it's nice and smooth uh, before allowing that to continue to simmer and cook. You'll know it's done when it's thick and gravy textured. Our timer had gone off here and our vegetables are done. You'll get a nice little peek. They're more roasted than they look on camera. They could have probably been in a little bit longer, but I was ready to eat by now. And our finished chicken dinner with some roasted vegetables and gravy. It was delicious and the leftovers were great too.